Lauren Laverne's web chat. It's not actually a web chat. That would just sound like this. Me typing, that'd be weird. Uh, instead, we have an actual person on the line, and it is the person behind a fantastic website called BritMovie.co.uk, which is an extremely loving uh, website dedicated to fantastic British films from, well, I guess, it, I mean, the 20s, right the way through to the modern day. And the man behind it, Steve DeBank, is on the line now. Hello, Steve. Hi, good morning, Lauren. How are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Well, good listen... Love yourself? Oh, well, we love your site, Steve. We, we discovered it uh, just a few weeks ago and, and thought this would be perfect for web chat. Uh, that's, can, that's nice to hear. Tell me how you got started, because you've been going since... Was it 98 that you began? Uh, it was about 98, 97. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really started off... Uh, I had a motorbike accident when I was about 19. Yeah. Uh, and I was home on sort of board wet... Sunday afternoon, uh, watching a film on Channel 4, one of the real old Ealing films. Mm-hmm. And uh, I looked online and there was sort of no sites covering those sort of films from the past. You know, there's like thousands of sites dealing with Hollywood films. Yeah. And absolutely nothing uh, dealing with old British films. So I just popped a few uh, pieces online on a bit of free web space I had and uh, I started getting some feedback from people and so I put a bit more up and then more feedback and it's really just spiralled out of control from there. So It is enormous. I call yourself the reluctant webmaster. <laughs> you call yourself the what? The reluctant webmaster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know what they say about greatness, that's uh, some are born with it, thrust uh, upon them and all that. <laughs> Tell um, I mean, it, it, it really has just other people sort of joining in has kept me interested and, uh, you know, it's been like a creative outlet as well to keep my mind occupied, so... Absolutely. I mean, so if people go on the, online today, all these years later, it has, as you said, it's it's really snowballed. It's got a lot bigger. So there's like reviews up there, a huge film archive yeah. uh, of reviews and information about films. There's also a big forum. The community aspect of it's really big, isn't there it? Is, that, is the main, that is the main part of it. So many people uh, join up and they'll ask questions and there'll always be someone there who will have an answer for them. And people will also bring to you recognition films you'd never even heard of or anything and you'll read about me and think yeah i like the look of that i'll hunt that film out and watch it and i must have seen hundreds maybe even thousands of films that i've never even heard of otherwise and because people have suggested that that's, that's been great yeah just people have just given me a brief mention of a film and i thought mm, that sounds interesting i'll I'll track that one down. And is that how you decide what to feature? Because I know, for example, you've been following the BFI Flipside re-releases, which is have, kind of... Yeah, I think we're up to about number 19 now. And right. And that's like weird and wonderful stuff from their archives, isn't it? Yeah, some of it's weird and wonderful, and some of it's very good stuff like uh, Deep End. Or like Lunch Hour. I thought yeah. Lunch Hour sounded great, but Lunch Hour never got a proper release because it was a bit short because it's literally an hour long, isn't it, that film? It, it is. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, sort of B-movie shorts that were second features. Yeah. That uh, sort of played just about 60 minutes long. But, uh, yeah, Lunch Hour is definitely an interesting film. Uh, it starts off quite normally, just like a romance, but the latter stages of the film, it goes quite surreal. And it's all... how this relationship would end if, if a pair of them had an affair together. It's kind of about a girl, on, a girl and her boss who are thinking about having an affair and they literally right, go yeah. off to try and try and knock boots on their lunch hour, don't they? <laughs> That's why right, um, he gets this little CD flat for them. And oh, nice. <laughs> they basically get no further than getting to the flat and having an argument with each other. And that's the hour. Yeah. Um, so listen, um, as well as that, there's a shop on there. You've got a section on iconic film studios like Hammer Films and Pinewood. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, Hammer has made a comeback, but it's not really the gothic Hammer. You know, we all remember of Christopher Lee and yeah. his cushion of all them. is a lot more Americanised now. I think they've just taken the name Hammer. So we mainly focus on the original Hammers, the old gothic horrors. There's also uh, Eatling Studios covered and Pinewood and most of the main ones. The kind of iconic places. I mean, it must be a good resource for film students as well. Do you get a lot of them coming onto the site? We we have uh, a section on the forum for uh, media studies, so Mm -hmm. people can come along and ask questions and people give their feedback. So. OK, and as you, and as we said earlier, anybody can contribute. How can people get involved? Do they just go online and go onto the forum? Yeah, you just, just like any normal forum, you go on the forum, uh, just register. Yeah. So you, know, you, know, you just need an email address. Or you can just send me an email and, you know, send anything you'd like posted online. You know, if, if you've got a favourite film or something, you know, you'd like to post a review for. Or there's an actor you'd like, you know, 
something posted, I'm, I'm quite happy to accept any contributions and post it up. And how does the and shop work? Service. How does the shop bit work, Steve? Is that is that do you do all that stuff? Uh, no, that that works on uh, just a click through. Thankfully, uh-huh. that just sort of pays for the site. Right. Because uh, obviously it, the, the cost has really spiralled. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I started out, it was something like about twenty-five pound a year, uh, and now it's sort of spiralled out to about two hundred pound a month, just you know, for the hosting and everything. Yeah. So you obviously you have to find ways of covering that to keep the site up. But you've got some great DVDs that you haven't quite I haven't really seen anywhere else. I mean, um, do you think that we treasure like our film heritage enough in this country? Because obviously this is something that you've done as a fan, and you know, you uh, really not just really. Uh, I mean, I was speaking to you before. There was. The British Film Forever season, I think that was about 19... No, about 2009 or something, mm-hmm. where the, the BBC did the whole summer of uh, British films, and they also did some documentaries. Uh, and Matthew Sweet did a piece on BBC Four on B-movies a couple of years ago. So it's like that now, but the problem is there's very few British films getting shown on television. Uh, when I was young... They'd often be on BBC Two, on Channel Four. Uh, I can remember coming in from the pub late at night when I was a teenager, and it'd be like old hammers on ITV. Perfect. Uh, and now they've started to fade away. You don't really see them much of them. I know it's weird. I always think like I'd rather watch a Ealing comedy than Cash in the Attic. It can't be, can't be comparably expensive. <laughs> well, I mean that's the problem with the rich film industry. It goes through these sort of peaks and troughs. Yeah. Uh, the last one would have probably been around the time of train spotting in the Brit pop era when, you know, there was a lot of confidence in the industry and a lot of films were out. But at the moment, it's really quite quiet, so there's not a lot there. Well, maybe that's the time to look back into the archive yeah, and enjoy I, some I, of the old stuff. I mean, I think the main thing I'd like about the site is that people come along and they maybe they'll find a film that they haven't seen before and it might just spark their interest to check it out and look back. Well, I think that's what's going to happen, Steve. I'm sure everyone's going to go and look at it today. Thank you so much for talking to me. That's a pleasure, Lauren. Have a lovely, lovely day. To you. Take care. Take care. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. That's Steve DeBank uh, in Shropshire at home there, working very hard on Britmovie.co.uk. And honestly, look it up. It's a really interesting site and just absolutely, as I said, lovingly put together by him and uh, the, the community behind it. This is Britmovie, if you want to look him up on Twitter, Britmovie.co.uk on online.